Up to this date, and according to the World Health Organization, more than 780 million people living in least developed countries lack access to improved sources of drinking water. Under the UN's General Comment No. 15, Paragraph 2, the human right to water entitles everyone to sufficient, safe, acceptable, physically accessible and affordable water for personal and domestic uses. But you see where the problem is? Domestic and personal uses? Drinking water? There isn't much emphasis on the importance of supplying water for multiple uses. Communities use water for an area of domestic and productive uses, including drinking, cooking, cleaning, bathing, livestock, crop irrigation, tree growing, and many other water-dependent enterprises. Water for productive uses, such as agriculture and industrial uses, account for more than 70% of water withdrawals. So the question becomes, how can multiple-use services of water be incorporated in infrastructural projects and water management strategies to target human rights issues within rural communities? All right, let's conceptualize the problem. So if your house is here and the river is three kilometers away, how would you get that water to your house? The answer is infrastructure. Infrastructure, whether it's in a rural or urban setting, must meet all water quality targets, achieve reliability targets, have a decent pressure and flow, be cost effective, achieve community satisfaction, continually monitored and maintained and effectively operated by villages and other management structures. In a standard urban family house, there usually is one tap in the kitchen, one in the bathroom, one in the toilet, and another one in the backyard. Now imagine that none of those taps were there and that you had to go outside your house several times to see if the taps are working or not. Cross the road, and it might be raining that day, wait in a queue for about 20 minutes to fill one bucket of water. Unless you exercise and can lift at least two buckets, but that's another issue. And the water from this tap is of unknown quality and very poor flow. How would you feel about that? So I had to two tribal communities in Limpopo in South Africa, one of Africa's driest places. This is one of the most poorly developed provinces when it comes to water infrastructure as the current South African Minister of Water Affairs described it. <laughs> Limpopo is the South African province with the highest level of poverty with 78.9% of the population living below the national poverty line. However, Limpopo is one of South Africa's richest areas in platinum and chrome, thus attracting mines competing at a global scale. According to the local economic development plans, mining activities in Limpopo contribute to 23.2% of Limpopo's GDP. In addition to the mining, Limpopo has a favorable climate, which allows for double harvesting seasons, an agricultural advantage that has seen the province referred to as South Africa's food basket. Runoff from both mining and agriculture constitutes a high risk on water quality. Add to that dead animals and diapers in your river. Sometimes people throw diapers. No, they throw diapers inside. Yes, yes. Okay. When they wash, they pour that water inside. Okay, they wash and pour that water inside. Yes. And I heard that animals die in the canal, in this canal. So this is a canal. Yes. Last week she saw a dead animal. When was the last time you had a you had a problem from the water? Was it was there any time that you felt sick from the water from drinking it? Hey, we get sick. Yeah. When was the last time that you got sick from the water? This week. I picked up an interesting newspaper which shows people are protesting against water, which is the residents pay ancestors for water. And it's very interesting, it shows the frustration of the whole district about the water issue. There's an old English saying out of sight is out of mind. Pipe installations and investments are closely related to demographical booms and increases. But pipes are underground, and we tend not to think about them. So who's responsible for these infrastructures to meet the costs of maintenance, especially if you have a pipe laid in 1930s? And can this aging infrastructure accommodate for increased level of service 
and constant rural sprawling. Professionals became aware that systems designed for one single water use were used for multiple purposes in an unplanned way, and so became de facto multiple use systems. So this is the tap. Nothing. Nothing. This is the pipe for this reservoir, which is not working now. Yes. And it's an engineering problem. This was a de designing problem. Design problem. This is the pipe which didn't work. Yeah, it used to. It was expected that this pipe would push the water because there was no pressure. Mm -hmm. This is the whole system collapsed. You see here. Yeah. yeah. There's a leaking pipe somewhere. Okay. There's a big fuse up here. People get over here mm -hmm. and fix it. So this is the, the reservoir. When water runs through the standpipes found on the streets, under the free basic water policy of South Africa, each citizen must acquire 25 litres per day. Any extra amount of water should be paid for. However, what's the only way of regulating extra amounts of water? Water meters. However, people have done their own illegal connections to get water closer to their houses and acquire more than 25 litres per day. There are two ways to illegally connect to the taps that are actually working. One is to remove the tail of the tap, the stopper, and put a T-like connection and connect. This was the cheap and easy way to do it. There's a better way to do it, but they need to get somebody to do it for them, which connects the people to the underground pipe, thus giving them more flow and quantity to the household. What is he saying? The pipe one day, <laughs> or some days. Those connections kill the system because the system is not designed for it. The wheelbarrow is too heavy. You push it until it's home. Too far. Obviously, yeah. it's too far to get the wheelbarrow and go there. Yeah. Yeah. You see? That's why now we used to hire the donkey cars. Unemployment in the community is 58.9% according to the South African statistics, of which 70.5% are between the age of 18 and 40 years old. One way to cope with this situation is to start a water tankering business, which were mushrooming in every village. These water trucks go to the river, fetch the water, and deliver it to customers who have already placed an order via text message. Studies have shown a strong correlation between water and poverty. The more water you have, the more well-off you are. Water-related businesses and other small-scale agricultural activities amount up to 30% of household income at the current state of the infrastructure. Seppo, yeah. you're boiling water now? Yeah. For shower? For shower. So this is one shower? Yeah. Okay. So you need 10 buckets to go garden the whole, yes. to water the whole garden, right? Yes. Take a shower and make myself clean. Does it require a lot of water to make the bricks? Maybe. <laughs> if Raj me came at 3,000 liters. 3,000 liters? Yeah, I want to do it. 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 She's supposed to have a dam at home. She's supposed to have a dam at home. It's a good work, hard work. You see? The whole bottom understanding is when people were living completely with nature and we're producing more than we are producing now. Far, far by far. Kijuma ore, ogar reki ya kwa lo kwa gebereka gelima, kimuga ke pumelele.
I have got to come with solutions. And those solutions must be sustainable. The state is going to take responsibility. It's heavy. Shop, let's go and get the goat. Yes, now you can. Is it recording? So may God bless her soul. She was a good goat. It was a he or a she? Oh, she, she, she. She, she was a good goat. You cannot see anything? Look, it's too hot. Extremely hot. This is holy tea. Holy tea. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bye bye.